Welcome to another episode of Bad Audio Diary. This is where I look at audio that's bad, audio that could have been better, and audio that is actually quite good, but could easily have been bad. So all of those options are available. We're going to watch a few clips from a new show that's been on the BBC just yesterday, in fact, and it's called Primates, and it's all about primates. It's a fascinating nature documentary, but is the sound always accurate? That's the question. So, natural history documentaries or nature documentaries, are they trying to make monkeys out of us? Well, <laughs> let's watch a little clip. OK, so it's some kind of a monkey cracking open some kind of a nut. It's, uh, I've just got it down here somewhere. It's a beard capuchin monkey. Maybe something to do with capuchin monks, maybe something to do with cappuccino, coffee. I don't really know. I'm not an expert on these subjects. Sound-wise, though, it looks good to me and it sounds good to me. Let's just uh, listen to it and watch it again. <laughs> that sounds fine. I'm watching this, uh, this monkey and I'm listening to the sound that it's making and it sounds perfectly believable. Well, you know, not all of these sounds are actually recorded on the location and apparently 99% of... I had a funny noise. Apparently 99% of them are added later in post-production. Well, who'd have thought it? But that really does work. And if it works, it works. And I'm satisfied with that. Let's listen to another example. So here we go. You know, I'm not so bad with that either. That really does sound believable. I really can't believe that monkey is hitting that nut with that stone. That's what it would sound like in real life. Maybe that is the real sound. You know, it's not impossible. Uh, it depends where they can put the microphones, how long the lens is, whether it's going to scare the animals, how many different setups they've got to try before they get something that's usable. usable. <laughs> there must be so much to go wrong in this kind of uh, filming and uh, audio recording. Let's look at another example with the same monkey. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm calling it a monkey. It might be a monkey or a primate or a lemur. I, I don't know the difference, but, I'm, you know, in the comments, in the comments. Let's look at this one and take a listen. Okay, let's just take a look at that again. Yes, and once more. <laughs> I'm not unhappy with the sound itself. The sound sounds fine. It sounds like a... It doesn't look like a nut, actually, but it's something being hit with something. It does sound like that, but... The, the video, it looks slowed down, so either it was shot at a higher frame rate so that it would be... It would, it's blah, 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 so that it would play back in slow motion at a normal frame rate, or perhaps they shot it at a normal frame rate and slowed it down in post-production. It looks a little bit slowed down in post-production to me, but then I'm not particularly any kind of video expert, but it does look slowed down. So if you're trying to match audio, real, light, real speed audio with slowed down video, that's not really going to work very well. You know, you can change the speed of audio. Uh, but it's either going to change the pitch or it's going to have artefacts which make it sound a little bit distorted and less believable. So I'm going to say that there is either some clever editing going on here. Well, yeah, some clever editing going on here, some clever, clever fakery going on here. And it's not bad. It really is not bad. Let's just listen to, listen to it again and, and watch it for that slow-mo. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely slow-mo. <laughs> this monkey lemur or primate or whatever it is is such a star i'm going to play all of those examples again in sequence and enjoy okay that's a good example i'm very happy with that i think it is believable in the context of what they're trying to do and bearing in mind how exceptionally difficult it must be for sound I'm not saying it's not difficult for the video, but uh, I think it's more difficult for the uh, the sound, to be honest. I think that really works well. It, I can watch that and I can believe it and the slow motion. OK, it's a little thing, but <laughs> who's bothered about that? Let's look at another monkey 
lemur or primate or whatever. I'm just going to call them monkeys. Can I just do that? Just just call them monkeys. You can call me a monkey if you like. A great big one. <laughs> I don't mind. Let's watch this. Oh, sorry, I should explain it first. What's happening here is there's um, a jackfruit, apparently, is what it is, hanging from a tree. And the monkey has competition from a squirrel. It's a, a great big brightly coloured squirrel. It doesn't look like any of the squirrels I see around here, but apparently it is a squirrel. So the squirrel's trying to get to the jackfruit and the monkey's trying to get to the jackfruit. And the monkey is a little bit more intelligent than the squirrel and he's trying to award the, the squirrel off. So just watch and see what happens here. Oh, and listen as well. <laughs> <laughs> Can you believe that? The monkey's giving the squirrel a whack in the face to make it go away. So apparently there's some benefit in the in the squirrels being around. So the monkeys tolerate them uh, because they give them access to... Then the squirrels know which jackfruits are ripe or something like that. I learned that from watching the programme. So I've learnt, I've learnt something today. Let's just watch that again. It's, it's a really good one. <laughs> OK, so I'm going to say here that did they get a microphone up in that tree? Even if they did get a microphone up in that tree, I'm going to think it would have to be a directional microphone to get as clear a sound as that. And if it's a directional microphone, it's got to be pointed in the right direction. The chances of that happening, even have they got um, a motorised mount for the microphone, like the uh, hothead, as they call it in, um, in the camera world, and could it move that quickly? I don't know. I'm really, really suspicious about how how true this is. But it looks OK. I'm going to say it doesn't quite sound OK. It sounds a bit exaggerated to me, so it's a little bit over the top from reality. But sometimes that's what the audience wants. They don't want actual reality. They want something that feels like reality. Sometimes that's more important. I certainly learned that when I was working in the theatre many years ago with theatre sound effects and, and the like. Let's have a look at this uh, same, um, it's not the exact same monkey and exact same squirrel, but it's the same group of animals. Let's see what happens here. <laughs> that poor squirrel, it's never going to get his dinner, is it? Likewise, it doesn't really look possible to me to capture that sound in real life, but I do appreciate the fact they've, they've used a different sound to the previous one. It's a more subtle sound and I think it really is suited to what we are seeing. And I've got another example as well, which is another good one. <laughs> there we go. So we can hear this uh, monkey uh, getting the squirrel to go away. So let's have a look at all three examples in sequence and just uh, just enjoy them. Take them in. <laughs> Fantastic. OK, so what we've got is, firstly, we've got an example which really does, apart from the slow motion, it really does sound believable. It sounds like there was a microphone right there capturing the actual sounds as they were made. The second example, it kind of feels believable. It's not really 100% there, but it, it suits the purpose and it delivers what the audience expectations are. But are these sound effects editors ever tempted to go a little bit further than this and create sounds which are not realistic? Well, yeah. In fact, sometimes they are. OK, did you believe that? <laughs> did you really believe that? Let's have it again. <laughs> and let's just focus in on it just to make sure that we can hear it and see it and hear it properly. No way did that monkey make that noise. It's, uh, what is it? It's um, a lesser bush baby, apparently. It did not make that noise. The animal did not make that noise. So and there's no way I'm believing that. Was it just a one-off? Maybe it's um, uh, maybe it's a sound editor's joke. <laughs> maybe they like to slip in jokes every now and then, see if it gets past the, uh, the, the director. Let's look at another example. No way, no way, no way did that monkey make that noise. Let's focus in. 
no. <laughs> and one more, and it really is getting to ridiculous proportions here. So <laughs> brace yourselves. Well, we're getting into the realms of complete fiction here. So let's just look at the three of them in turn. OK, it's fun. It's not realistic, but it's fun. And it's meant to be entertainment, so it's meant to be um, a, realistic a, a realistic portrayal of nature to a certain extent, but also entertainment to a certain extent, because if it wasn't entertaining, then we wouldn't watch it. And to be honest, these, these animals, they're probably doing really boring things like 23 hours and 59 minutes of the day, and it's just every now and then they do something that we would really appreciate watching. Just to finish off, I'm going to play a clip of, um, he's not the dubbing editor for this programme, but uh, this is Graham Wilde, and he was the dubbing mixer, sorry, dubbing mixer, his title was. He's the dubbing mixer on Planet Earth 2. So what he says is illuminating. One of the things with natural history is that we are, we're trying to create what you think you should hear, but I'd say 99% of the time it's shot mute. Okay, so there we have it. Uh, who, who doesn't like watching monkeys having fun? <laughs> we have examples of good audio. The first one was good. The second one was good, but a little bit questionable. The third one, come on, come on, we're not believing that. So there you go for a bad audio diary. How is that? Answers in the comments. Whatever you think about it, whether you think it's good, bad, they shouldn't have done it like that, should be more realistic, should make more effort with the audio, should get themselves a parabolic reflector microphone. Look that up. Answers in the comments and tell me what you think. I'm David Mellor, course director of Audio Masterclass. Thank you for listening. <laughs>